Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 182 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our second video, second lesson on the topic of probability. It is important, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you have watched the first video because this is a continuation of what we did yesterday. Yesterday we discussed the notion of two events being independent. Today we'll talk about, right here, two events being independent. Today we'll talk about what it means for the events to be mutually exclusive. Okay, so pay very close attention. The problem that you see on the blackboard is in fact the exactly the same problem that we did yesterday. The only difference is that yesterday Yesterday the, yesterday, the, yesterday, the, the question was, what are the odds that both A and B will succeed? What are the odds that both A and B will succeed? Today we do not have A, A and B. We have either A or B or both. It's not and, it is or. You see that? That's, that's, that is the essential difference between the two, two questions, two concepts. Yesterday the question was, what are the odds that if A works on the problem independently and again uh, if you put person A in one room and you put a person B in the other room and they both work on the problem independently in other words one has nothing to do with the other one has absolutely nothing to do with the other whether or not A will succeed has absolute succeed or not succeed has absolutely no bearing on the performance of the other one and vice versa if that's the case we say the two events are independent if the two events are independent then the likelihood that both of these people will succeed. I have two people on my staff. One has only 30% chance of figuring out a solution to this particular problem. The other person is a little bit more experienced. There's, I assign him, my gut feeling tells me that he has a 70% chance of figuring out the solution because he has more experience, more knowledge, he's been around for a while. I put both of them in two separate rooms and I give them the, this particular problem to work on, whatever the problem may be. Maybe there's a bug in the computer and they have to find a solution to it. What I'm looking for is, what are the odds that they will both succeed? That's what this is. What are the odds that they will both succeed, A and B? Well, yesterday we found out that as long as they are independent, as long as they are independent, which I just told you that they are in this particular case, they don't have to be all the time, the problem will tell you that they're working independently. If they're in the, working independently, then the odds that they will both succeed, A and B, is simply the odds of A being successful times the odds of B being successful. Okay, keep watching and see what happens. The odds of A being successful is 30%, 3 out of 10. Odds of B being successful is 70%, 7 out of 10. And we saw yesterday that that's 3 times 7, which is 21 over 100, or 21%. As you can see, 21% is actually lower than the lower probability. So the odds are only 21% that they will both succeed, given the fact that one person has only 30% chance, one person has only 30% chance of being successful, being able to find the solution to the problem, and the second person has as high as 70% chance, even though this person has a 70% chance of being successful. But if you ask me what are the odds that they will both succeed, I will say, well, that's only that's very little, that's about a fifth. It's only 21% chance. Here we are not asking what are the odds that they will both succeed, we are asking what are the odds that either A or B or they will both succeed. You see the difference? This is A and B. A and B both will succeed. Here it's either this or that or it could be both. You with me? Let's continue then. It's very important that you understand the language. So let's continue. We are done with this part. This is what we did yesterday. This is what we did on day number 181. Today what we are doing is very different. Today what we are doing is the situation of or, okay? And this is how we write it. This is the, the odds of, of, of either the A or B or both being successful is written like this. P for probability, as you already know. Okay, keep paying attention. The problem is that in most textbook, in most textbook, and even most people when they are doing their work, they are too lazy to write all of this out. Out of sheer laziness, out of sheer laziness people write out of sheer laziness no other reason no good reason whatsoever just people are lazy instead of writing all of this out we write A or B 
Now when we say a or b, a or b, what we mean is this. It could be a or it could be just b or it could be both. But we're not saying they both have to be successful. If they both happen to be successful, that's, uh, that's fine and dandy. But it's either a or b or maybe they're both. And this is how we write it. We leave out the both part in here. Do you see the difference between this and what we just what we just erased there? This is what we're dealing with. Okay, so far so good. Let's do the problem then. So let's make a note here that this is same. This is same as a or b. I need the room so we can erase all of this thing. And as I said, this is. It should say laziness. Laziness is spelled s. Okay. To answer this question. In order for us to, in order for be able to answer this question, what are the odds that either A or B or they may both succeed? It, before I can answer that question, I have to know, we have to know whether or not the events are mutually exclusive. Whether or not the events are mutually exclusive before we can answer this question. So now the question is, what does it mean for the two events to be mutually exclusive? Let's find out, shall we? Let's put it on the top here. Just keep in mind, I'm, I'm going to raise all of those things, keep in mind that A has 30% chance, B has a 70% chance. Two events, two events are said to be mutually exclusive, I'm lazy here, mutually exclusive, two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one and if I misspell the word occurrence, don't make a fuss about it, that's what it is. Occurrence, which is a noun of occur. If the occurrence of one rules out the other. If the occurrence of one rules out the other. That's the definition. That's what it means to be mutually exclusive. We'll look at an example to make you understand what that actually means. I'm going to raise all of this thing. We, need, we really need the room. For example, take a look at this example right here. Let's say... Let's say that we're going to define event, event, let's not call them event A and B because if we are using event A and B in the problem there, let's call them event, event E and event F. Event E is the event of roll a tree on a dice. So the question is, what are the odds, if I roll a dice, what are the odds that I will roll a tree? That's event E. Event F is roll a an even number. Are you with me so far? Okay, keep listening. What are the odds of rolling an even number? So here, if you are asked to find the odds of rolling either E or F, in other words, what are the odds that I will either roll a 3 or an even number? What are the odds that I will roll either a 3 or an even number? Well, think about it. Okay, we're rolling it just once. We roll the dice just once. That's it. Roll the dice. Roll the dice once. Do you understand? That's the situation. We're rolling a dice once, and the question is, what are the odds that if I roll a dice once, what are the odds that I will get either a 3 or an even number? But think about it for a second. If I roll a 3, if I happen to roll a 3, I roll a dice and I look at it and it says 3 on it, is it possible now for me to having roll an even number? The answer is no. answer is no. Same thing applies, same exact logic will apply in the reverse direction. If I roll a dice and you look at it, the dice, and I ask you, well, what, what do you see there? And you see, well, I see an even number. Well, if you happen to see an even number on my roll, then what are the odds that I have rolled a 3? There is no chance in hell that I could have possibly rolled a 3 if you just inform me that the number that you see on the roll on, on, a, on a dice is an even number. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one, if the occurrence of one, if the occurrence of one rules out the other. If you roll a three, it is not possible for you to have to have rolled an even number. 
if you roll an even number, it is impossible for you to have roll a 3. One negates the other. If one even happens, it makes the other even impossible to happen. If that's the scenario, we say the two events are mutually exclusive. You with me? If they are mutually exclusive, let's use the Venn diagram now. I'm going to show you in the Venn diagram. Let's do it up here. So let's do it here. So here you agree that these two events are mutually exclusive. Because it is impossible to have rolled a 3 and an even number in one roll. It is impossible. How can you possibly roll a 3 and an even number? One is completely ex mutually exclusive to the other. The occurrence of one rules out the other. In the, four, in, 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 the, in the language of the Venn diagram, this is how we show it. Here is our event E. And here is our event F. As you can see, they have no overlapping area. These are mutually exclusive. If that's the case, then I'm, I need the room, so we, we're going to do it up here. If this is a scenario that you're dealing with, they are mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with each other. They do not touch each other. They do not overlap each other. They have absolute. If one happens, it makes the other one becomes impossible to happen. This this is how we show in the in the in the Venn diagram. Well, in that case, the odds of either this or that happening is simply the odds of this plus the odds of that. That's all it is. Odds of E or F is simply the odds of E plus the odds of F. And in about one minute time, in a couple of minutes time, we'll look at a scenario where the two events are not mutually exclusive. We'll get to that in a second. So let's take a look at it here. So here, what are the odds of rolling an even number? Well, there are three even numbers. There are three odd numbers on a dice. So rolling either an even number or an odd number is simply 50%. Make sure we, we keep our story straight. E was the 3, wasn't it? E was the roll of 3. So odds of rolling a 3, even E was the roll of 3, odds of rolling a 3 is 1 out of 6. And odds of rolling an even number, which was our event F, is 3 out of 6. Because there are 3 even numbers. So the total odds are 4 out of 6 or 2 thirds. In other words, there is a 2 third percent chance not two third percent rather, there is a two third chance, almost 67 percent chance that if you were to roll a dice, you will either get an even number or if you did not get an even number, it's going to be an odd number. Do you understand? That's all. Now let's look at the situation with the problem that we started out with. Problem that we started out with. We need the room obviously, we can erase all of this thing now. And now we are dealing with, so again, when somebody asks you what are the what are the what are the what are the likelihood of A or B, first thing we have to understand is that this is this is what they're saying is that A or B or both, even though it doesn't say that, but that's what it is. If they are mutually exclusive, if if event A and B are mutually exclusive, if events A and B are mutually exclusive, now I'm back to A and B, forget about E and F, we're going to just talk about A and B. If they are mutually exclusive, then it's simply probability of A prob prob plus the probability of B. And in the Venn diagram, it shows up like this, event A, event B. Nothing to it, you add up the two and that's it. There is no overlapping thing here. There is no overlapping area. That's it. You add up this, this probability and you add up this probability. Now let's look at if the two events if the two events, two events are not mutually exclusive. If the two events are not mutually exclusive, if the two events are not mutually exclusive, that simply means that just because one event happened does not mean that the other one cannot happen. Think about it for a second. I have two guys sitting in two different rooms. I have assigned them a problem. A problem, I ask them to find a solution to it. One guy, person A is working in that room by himself, person B is working on that room by itself. Now, just because person A happened to find a solution to the problem, does that mean that now it is impossible for B to find a solution? Of course not. Occurrence of event A does not rule out B. And vice versa, just because B finds a solution to the problem, does that not mean that A is now unable to find a solution? It doesn't mean that. Occurrence of one does not rule out the other. They are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. How do we show 
in the form of a Venn diagram. In the form of the Venn diagram, it simply means that it is possible, it is possible for person B to be successful also afterwards, after you have informed me that A has already found a solution. You tell me that, oh, A just found a solution to the problem, he solved it. B is still in that room working on it. And then he comes out 10 minutes later and he says, oh yeah, I solved it too. It is quite possible that they can both find a solution. One does not rule out the other. In other words, it is possible for both of them to be successful at finding the solution. It is possible for both of them to be, to be successful at finding a solution. The success of one does not rule out the success of the other. The question is, how do we show this in, in, the, in the form of Venn diagram, in the language of Venn diagram? The scenario where they may both be successful. Well, this is right here. Here is, here is person A, event A. This, this will represent the, the probability of A being successful. And here is the scenario where B will be successful. And there is also a chance that they may be both successful. They may both be successful. Which is what we are dealing with here. Question is, how do we find the answer to this one? In this scenario, the probability that both either A or B is successful is very simple. Let's keep it separate here. Let's have a demarcation. Here, the chances that either A or B or both may be successful, which we always left out because we are lazy, is simply, is simply the odds of A being successful plus the odds of B being successful. But if you stop right here, like this one, if you stop right here, what happens? When you talk about the odds of A being successful, we're counting this entire circle. We're counting the entire circle in which, in which we have this area. And then when we talk about the odds of B being successful, we are again counting the same area when we're counting B. We are double counting it, obviously. Since we are double counting it, we have to subtract that quantity, minus the odds of A and B. That's all. That's it. This is the case where they are mutually, they, when they are not mutually exclusive. If they happen to be mutually exclusive, you just simply add up the two figures. That's it. I'm going to wrap it up now. It's taking too long. Let's finish up the problem. We're going to do the problem on the top. Let's do the problem on the top because it'll be better. So we're talking about this scenario here. The odds of A happening. So we're talking about the odds of either A or B or both is simply equal to the odds of A plus the odds of B minus the odds of A and B. Odds of A is 3 out of 10. We are told that it, there is a 30% chance. We are told that there is a 30% chance that he is going to be successful. Tell you what, I'm going to erase this part now. We are not dealing with this thing. We are talking about situations when they are not mutually exclusive. As you can see, they, they, they overlap. They are not mutually exclusive. We are not talking about this scenario. Let's erase this thing. We don't need it. So we can continue here. The odds of A or B or both happening is equal to odds of A happening or odds of B happening or odds of A and B happening. A and B. Odds of A happening is 3 out of 10. Odds of B happening is 7 out of 10. Minus, it should say minus, not plus. If we end up saying plus, instead of double counting, we're going to end up counting, counting the damn thing three times. We end up having triple counting. We have to take away one. Let's do it here. Minus A and B. I'm going to do it here. Minus A and B. And this is something we did yesterday. We did this thing on day number 181. And we found out that if the two events are independent, which they are, we were told that they are working independently. If they are independent, then the odds of both A and B being successful, we saw in the beginning of the video, is simply the product. There we go. We are almost done. So this is 3 out of 10, 7 out of 10, that's 100%. So it's just going to be 1 minus 21 over 100. And, and that comes out to be 79% because 100 minus 20 would have been 80. So 100 minus, 100 minus 21 is going to be 79. So the, so the bottom line is that if two people are working independently, if two people are working independently on a given problem, one person has a 30% chance of being, being successful, the other person has a 70% 70 70 chance of being successful. And if you ask me what are the odds that they will both succeed, my answer would be 
well, there is only 21% 21, 21 chance that they will both find a solution. But if you ask me, what are the chances that at least one of them will succeed? That's what this is. At least one of them will succeed. At least one of them succeed, will, which means that either A will succeed, or B will succeed, or they may both succeed. You see? A or B or both. What are the odds that two people are working on the problem? What are the odds that at least one of them will succeed? Well, even though individually they only have 30% chance and a 70% chance, because of the fact that they are both working on the problem at the same time, even though they are working independently, there is now 79% chance that I will have the solution to the problem. The more brain you put on the problem, the greater the odds that somebody will find the solution. You put one more person, regardless of the, what the odds are of the third person, it will increase the overall chance that at least one person will find a solution. If you put 100 people on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the solution, regardless of how little each of them may, be, may have a chance to find a solution individually, if 100 of them are working on the same problem at the same time, even though they are working independently, there is a very good chance that you will find a solution to it. Very good chance indeed. We we'll leave it at that, okay? Amen. Tomorrow, before I wrap it up, this is very, very one very last comment that I want to make is very important. This thing that we did here, A or B, A or B, right here. This is one method. This is method. Let's let's call it method number one. There are two other methods. Method number two and, and method number three. There are three different ways. Listen very carefully. There are three different ways we can answer this question. There are three different ways. What we just learned here is one method, which is the odds of A being successful plus the odds of B being successful minus the odds of both A and B, A and B being successful. This is one way of figuring it out. The problem is that problem is that on the test you probably you, you probably will not have all the bits of information to be able to solve the problem in this manner. There is a second method and there is a third method. Tomorrow we'll solve this problem one more time with all three methods together, one after the other. And you must know all three of the methods, as I said, because depending on the situation, one method may not work. Maybe one of, only one of the three methods will work. So you have to know how to manipulate uh, the information that is given to you and put it in a way that works for a given situation. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.